Hey guys, Nolar here. Uh, I'm back with Grand Cross, but today uh, we're not going to be doing any summoning or gameplay. We're going to actually talk about the uh, controversy that's going on right now. Um, right now, uh, CM Gold on the Netmarble forums just released this uh, clear campaign goal here. Um, I'm going to read it. I'll throw it up there on the screen. And in the background is just me uh, with my buddy Knox. We're muted. You're going to hear this specific... Um, uh, audio here, but uh, it's just me playing the game, some PvP, some death matches, stuff like that. So nothing to really be too concerned about. But I did want to talk about this because I think this is uh, kind of an interesting thing that uh, they're going forward with. So on the screen you'll see um, this is part of the post. It's uh, two parts. So one, they're saying we want to start a new initiative, the Clean Campaign, to foster and promote a more comfortable and fair environment for the Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. So please read more for details. So the first thing. The use and sharing of illegal programs is grounds for a ban. So they check for uh, illegal programs all the time that violate the term of service. Um, and if they find that, you're banned. That's pretty much it. It's just like, don't use modded APKs, don't cheat, don't do any of that kind of stuff. That's the most obvious thing. But uh, what kind of went from here was like, okay, does that include emulators? Now, BlueStax has uh, partnered with Netmarble to provide the most uh, immersive gameplay experience of Grand Cross, which it, it's pretty good. Um, and Blue Sox is not bad as an emulator in general. But everyone asks, so does this include emulators? Now, officially from that marble, they said that um, no, this doesn't include emulators. Emulators aren't illegal. However, if you have any issues like the game crashing in the middle of a PvP match, you can't really submit a ticket and get anything done. The game is officially supported on mobile and tablet devices. And that's, that's basically where they, their, their stance is, which I think it's completely fair. Um, it, you know, Grand Cross is an APK. You can throw, throw that onto an, any Android emulator or any like x86 software with emula Android and, and run it, but um, it's not su officially supported there. So if you have any issues, they can't help you. That's fine. And that's totally fine. Kind of a side note to this is it's kind of related to data mining, which and uh, game leaks, which is the second point they have here. So on the second point, they're saying uh, appropriate actions will be taken in response to game leaks slash data mining and the sharing of false information. Now, let me read this, and hopefully this becomes a little clearer. The acquisition and leaking of game information through irregular or illegal means is viewed as a form of hacking, uh, which violates our terms of service. Therefore, we will take appropriate actions against such violations. Um, they didn't really explain the actions, or maybe I missed it. Yeah, they didn't really explain how, but they're, for those of you who are aware of the JP side of Grand Cross, um, there was a data mine leaker, uh, data miner and a leaker, and he, I think, was given, you know, uh, some cease and desist letters and stuff like that, so he just basically gave it up. I'm, I'm like, really summing it up very quick, and I, I'm not too knowledgeable because I don't play the JP version. So that's kind of the gist of things, so that's what they're meaning. Um, in addition, we have no recently noticed that some users have misled others about future game uh, update content with incorrect data and info. Please keep in mind that spreading unofficial false information only causes confusion and disappointment for others. Please refer to official channels for correct information and then all that stuff. Now, they didn't really outline any response they would go to people sharing a false information, so it could be like absolutely nothing but it does have an effect on them, clearly, um, uh, to, you know, some kind of uh, potential lawsuit or something down the line. I, it wasn't very clear what their their actions are going to be here, but they are interested in having this false information stop. Okay, so what, what what's this whole point of data mining, all right? It, to them, they view data mining as a form of hacking, full stop. That's what they believe. They're in their right to believe it, whether or not you agree or disagree with it. They're in the license of this IP. This is how they are going to run their company. That's it. So they just basically said, look, you guys, if you're going to data mine or leak, you're going to be at risk for, I don't know, uh, cease and desist letters or further, uh, further litigation or something like that. 95 to 99% of people don't know how to APK extract and get all the assets and then, you know, share that stuff. So, like, this is really only for, you know, a very small percentage of people who are, have the capability and the, the no well the capability and the will to do this kind of stuff. Um, the the main point that they they have is just because there's data in the 
the APK in the game doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go live anytime soon. They could just have it as a placeholder for an idea and see if it works or just, just throw, it, throw it there and then later down the line they'll activate it or for most of the time some of the data that's been data mined just never gets used. It's just sit there as an idea that never fu uh, fully flourished into whatever concept they were working with. So I understand their perspective. It's like full stop. You just got to believe data mining to them is a form of hacking. They don't like it. That's it. All right. I get it. Now, the thing with false information is this is pretty much a direct, uh, full uh, comparison to the thing that happened with Escanor this past week. Everyone, all the people who, all the content creators who, blew, who play the JP side kind of knew the schedule and was like, yep, Escanor should be coming out. And instead, we got this 7% 7, 7 Deadly Sins banner, which is uh, what everyone says is a quote unquote bait banner because they want to drain your. Um, gems for uh, for this banner, so that next week when Escanor drops or whenever Escanor drops, I don't I don't know when, um, everyone's gonna go gonna be broke and they're gonna have to go buy some uh, gems and then go for him then. Okay, so they see that people who have experience with the JP side that there's a like, kind of a roadmap of like release dates and characters you should and shouldn't go for. Now. <laughs> This is kind of weird because Dokkan has the same problem. Well, a quote, unquote, quote unquote problem. There's a JP version of the game for Dokkan that's six months ahead or was, was released in January of 2015. And then the global version was released in January of 2015. Or not Jan July, June, July 2015. Um, and they've always been roughly six months behind. You know, you know that's kind of no, kind of different here now, but it's they're still lagging behind in content so with Dokkan and Bandai and Akatsuki they don't care because one the Dragon Ball IP is just so strong that no matter even if the JP players like I am a JP player tell the global players like hey you should probably skip this or this is you don't need to go hard on this banner then they don't care because you're not going to say no to pulling a blue flu uh, b blue fusion or a UI Goku or something like that. They're, they're, everyone's going to pick up on the big, big units of whatever. And they've kind of modified some units that didn't sell well in JP. Then we told the global players, hey, maybe you should skip it. They've modified some of those characters to the point where we're like, you know what? It's uh, we, we probably want to go in. Um, big examples, physical Goku Black. On JP, he was good. But then on global, he was even better. Better stats, the three key lead, uh, passive, all that stuff. So... They, they had this kind of issue, but they're kind of, one, they've got the advantage that the Dragon Ball IP is so big it doesn't really matter. People are going to spend anyways. And two, they've kind of tweaked it so that some units get a buff or get a nerf to kind of balance things out and, and well, usually a buff to encourage people to spend and, and get uh, going on the gacha. Now, Netmarble, as far as I know, only has two games that has two separate servers, like an Asian JP server and a global one. Every other game I played from Netmarble has had simultaneous releases, so there's only one server to, to be worried about. Which is good, because it's, it's not difficult to develop content separately and release schedules and that kind of stuff. So, like Marvel Future Fight is the biggest one I've done, um, Knights Chronicle, as far as I know, all those games just are on a global release. They're all one. So Netmarble with Grand Cross and King of Fighters this is the only time, those are the two games that I know of, I might be wrong, but those are the two games that I know of that have two separate servers, JP and Global. Um, or, I guess, in Grand Cross, Korean servers too. Now, what that means is that it's very, they, this is not, they're not experienced in managing two different content releases, release schedules, all that stuff. So, for them to say, to put a kaput to data mining or, or, using the JP roadmap as a guide for global players of what to do and not to do, that doesn't, that's like new to them. And for them, their response is, we're just gonna get rid of false information or like, when they say false information, it's basically that it wasn't officially ever announced by them that Escanor was dropping this past week, <laughs> you know? So to them, it's like, you guys are just spreading some BS out there and this is just not the way it's supposed to go. Um, so that's how they're seeing it, and I, I get it. That makes that makes some sense. At least that's how I uh, analyze that situation. The other part is too. Look, the global player base is bigger. 
it's not related to just one country on one server. So like, I mean, it's not the best example because JP Dokkan does make more money overall than the global side, but the glo just in terms of sheer raw numbers, global player base is going to be bigger than just a single server. Now, if I was a smart money-making person, I would want to uh, utilize that player base and grab as much money from them as possible. If, you, um, if we have uh, people aware of the JP side and, under, uh, and understanding the release schedule and cadence, they'll say like, look, skip this one, you know, go hard on this one, and blah, 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 blah. Then the global side uh, of the server is not making more money than JP side. So they're always going to want to switch up the content and the schedule so to keep you guessing uh, as to, hey, maybe uh, I should spend some, some of my premium currency here. Maybe I should wait. Like They want to make it so it's unpredictable. Using the JP uh, server as a guideline is, is good for us global players because we know what to say for, but if they're completely, they're trying to squash that concept so that we're always at an uneasy situation of like, oh man, should I, should I use those 30 gems now? Oh, I'm all close to, uh, if I go in, I want to get to pity, blah, 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 blah. So, and that's their, that's, they're right. That's the way they want to make the game and make money from it. I totally get it. But that's what they're doing. That's their goal. You know, they're trying to catch up global to JP so that in the end, it's a s simultaneous release. It's very obvious that they're doing that. Be, be uh, just looking at the release cycle. They're just pumping out units left and right. So that's their goal. And they don't want to give you any advantage so you can save some money and or, in other words, not give them any money. Um, I don't like it because, you know, I'd like to know what's coming up. But at the same time, I am uh, I understand their goal and this is the way they're going to approach it. Now, at the end there, they said, please follow our, let me see, please refer to official channels for correct information. <laughs> now. That bugs me. Correct information. And I'm going to explain why in a second here. If you guys have, uh, if you don't follow some of the other content traders like um, uh, Simply Casual, um, Mystic Watch, uh, Kabuki. Uh, Kabuki is uh, the one that uh, helped me uh, elucidate this point because he said, uh, quote unquote, clearly their official channel for correct information. Well, let's look at uh, Netmarble's correct information for the global site. They did, the most egregious thing they've done was the green ban um, announcement and like take back. So if you guys don't know, when green bond was released, I want to say like three weeks ago at this point, three, four weeks ago, um, they said, oh, he'll be in the general pool. Now, if it was, they, at the end, after the end of the week and the, the banner went away, they retracted that statement and said, oh, there, that wasn't uh, a typo or that was incorrect information is what I should say. If it was incorrect information, I don't know why they waited till the end of the banner to then release that, in, that uh, tell us exactly what's going to happen. If they knew beforehand there was incorrect information, they, they could have finished it in within a day or two and then encourage people like, hey, look, he's not going to be in the general pool. He'll be in the coin shop a few weeks later. So if you want him, get him now, right? So clearly their official current inf channel is incorrect information. Um, the other... One that's not so bad was the Merlin silhouette thing. There, when we had, I think it was Red Merlin come out, and then a week after it was the green one. I think they still used the silhouette for the red one, saying, "Guess who's coming next?" And did just like, wait, she was just here. Like, I don't understand what you're trying to communicate here. But yeah, that was not the worst thing, but it is something to say. Like, look, they can't even get their own information correct. And that's that's the point I'm trying to make. Is if they want us to refer to their channels, then get the stuff out right the first time. <laughs> like don't screw up you're just causing more confusion um, or to officially use their words um, uh, incorrect data and info so for spreading unofficial false information more confusion disappointment for others they're, they're already doing that themselves so like why put this on the, on the onus on um, the content creators who happen to know the JP side and the last thing the most important the one that just happened this week was this 7% quote unquote bait banner bait as in hey look we, we got a escrow looming either next week or a week or two after and they want you to go in spend your gems so that next week you'll be broke and got to go pay money to get real one uh, get more gems 
This banner said it was advertised as all the seven deadly sins. Well, clearly Escanor isn't out, so can't include him. And a day or two later, they officially put like a, a, a notice, a note, like, yeah, it doesn't include Escanor. So it doesn't technically include all seven deadly sins. But it's just like, guys, if you want us to refer to you, make sure you get your your information straight so we aren't confused and disappointed um, while we are. Now, look, this, I understand their perspective. So my whole main point of it is like, I get what they're coming from. And uh, I, I don't necessarily agree with all of it, but I, because I understand what they're doing, I, I can respect it in the sense that they communicated this with us. With, that's the best thing to come out of this like the, the silver lining and all this is they decided to make a post and say guys look don't data mine don't use mods you'll be fine um, and please try not to influence spread misinformation misinformation in the sense of nothing was officially announced by Netmarble so don't you know you can speculate all you want at least this is what I'm reading into it is you can speculate all you want but make sure you're not saying it's definitively happening next week. Esk is going to drop or, you know, this new amazing unit is going to drop. You can't say that stuff. So I get that. That's fine. And like I said, them making a post and communicating with us is great because you know what they could have done? They could have gone on to every content creator, kicked them out, DMCA'd all their uh, videos that it pertain to this whatsoever. So, you know, they could have taken much worse drastic measures. The silver lining in this whole thing is that they're communicating with you. So, look, um, from here on out, this is my expectation of them is anytime they want to make a change, they've got to make, they've got to announce it first and then make the change. So people can change their behavior or change it, um, not use emulators if they, they don't want us to do that. Whatever it is, the very fact is that Moro has communicated with us. So that's the takeaway from that. I just wanted to kind of give you my thoughts on it because there's a lot of things going through my head and I, I replied to a few tweets and I was like, mm, this is probably better for me to just try to make a more coherent video and just say, look, this is what I, what my stance is on this stuff. Again, yeah, from data mining, 95 to 99% of people don't know how to data mine in the first place. The cool thing is just the hype, you know, if you, if you get some, some information, you get a little more hype, but it could go the other way too because... Um, if you get some information and it doesn't look very good, then, you know, you're not going to be hype and you won't be spending. So like, that's, that's their whole reason. It's like, we're going to put this whole data mining thing and that's it. Uh, again, the false information, uh, that's how they want to go with it. That's how they want to go. You know, can't really do anything about much about it. So, but most importantly, they need to fix their own information and make sure that's all good before they send out the tweet, put up the post, whatever it is. Uh, let me know what you guys thoughts are on this whole situation um i mean i think uh i think it'll be okay um, we'll, we'll figure it out but uh yeah just comment down below um and try to keep it civil you know more than likely some people are going to take it a little extreme and try to do some more drastic measures <coughs> dox me um but you know what it doesn't matter at this point so uh hopefully everything went well let me know uh leave a like comment all that stuff you know, really, I want to engage in this kind of conversation with you guys to see exactly how you feel on it. So, I'll see you all next time. Nuller out.